Hey everyone, welcome to the video to get the AstroPixels front logic display and rear logic display installed in your Home Depot R2-D2. A couple of quick things before we get started. Remember to be gentle with the parts. They're made out of PLA and they might snap if you over tighten them. And you don't really need to over tighten them, so don't do it. Broken or missing parts, send me a message on Etsy and we'll get that sorted out for you. Most importantly, take your time, don't rush it. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. All right, let's get started with the parts and tools you'll need to complete this video. There's instructions, front side, lots of good information, back side, parts list. There is the holder for the microcontroller board with the lid. Mine is weathered, so it's going to look different than yours, by the way. There are three cable ties. There's the front logic display LED mount, the FLD clip, the two FLDs from AstroPixels, the rear logic display mount, the RLD from AstroPixels, and then there's two clips. One is longer than the other. One is a cap, one is more of a clip, and we'll talk more about that later. There's also the microcontroller. There are two 30 centimeter 12 inch cables and a four inch cable. You're also gonna need a power bank, USB-C cable about three foot long, some diagonal pliers are helpful. A longer screwdriver. I have a number two here. Use whatever works for you. Okay, we're going to start by removing the stock RLD and FLD from R2. Go ahead and take off the eyepiece. Unscrew the wing nut. Undo the blue clip. Pull it off, set it aside. You'll see inside, this is going to be the easiest one. Just go ahead and take your screwdriver. Take out the two screws. Hold on to the screws. You'll need them. You can set that piece aside or tape it inside, whatever works for you. Now we're going to go ahead and do the FLD. This one's a little more complicated. We're also going to be storing it inside um, using a zip tie so that we don't have to cut any of the wires. Be super careful with these wires. They are very fragile. At least they were in line. Lots of hot glue going on in this thing. Um, I actually did break one and I had to solder it and I hate soldering, but it was easily fixed. We're going to go ahead and secure the stock FLD inside the home using a red zip tie. You're going to want to thread the zip tie behind the screw post that is close to the FLD. Go ahead and make sure that you are not crushing any of the wires. You want to just slip it under, as you can see here. And so it's actually putting all the pressure on the plastic and it's not putting any of the pressure on the wires. Go ahead and cut off the excess if you choose. You can also use scissors here if you don't have diagonal pliers. So now we're going to install the rear logic display LED mount. There's a top and bottom to this. The top has four grooves. The bottom has two. When you put this in, the four grooves are gonna be pointing to the top of the dome. Go ahead and line it up. I would screw this about halfway down and then check it. If it looks good to you, go ahead and tighten it up. Don't over tighten. If it looks good, you're done. All right, moving along, we're going to install the FLD mount. This has an arrow that should point to the top of the dome and it should also face out so that it follows the curve of R2's head. You'll also notice that there's a groove on the top and the bottom. This is where the clip's going to install. Um, definitely don't do that now. You want to install all these brackets without anything clipped onto them. The reason being is that there's just not a lot of room to work with. It's really hard to get a screwdriver in here, especially when the boards are attached. So go ahead and line that up. Go ahead and screw in your two screws about halfway, three quarters. Just make sure it's loose. Go ahead and check it. If it looks good, go ahead and tighten it all the way. Um, don't over tighten. You don't need to. And uh, it should look pretty good. Next up, we're going to install the microcontroller into the center support mount in R2's dome. Go ahead and pull the lid off. You're going to want to take your two black cable ties, insert it through the triangle teeth side down. Do that for each one. And it should look like this. Perfect. We're going to go ahead and 
zip tie this to the center support. Um, you want this to be fairly tight. One way to check it, once it's zip tied, it should be able to slide up and down and stay put without sliding down. If you did that, you'll know it's tight enough. It doesn't need to be crazy tight or anything, but just, um, you know, you don't want it flopping around too much. You can leave the cable ties on if you'd like to tighten it more, or you can trim them off if you prefer that. And then when you're done with this, just go ahead and push it down out of the way, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. Next up is attaching the RLD clips and cables. Another reminder here, just be gentle with these boards. Don't force anything. Start with the smaller of the two clips. Now this clip is going to slide on. Go ahead and check out what I'm doing here. You can see that you just want to push it from the back. You don't want to squeeze the sides because it'll just clamp on it. You want to push it from the back. It's just slide it down like I did. This other one is a cap. So one side is, it's a semi cap as I'm going to call it. One side is slightly closed off. So it'll only go on so far. Go ahead and check that. If it's not going on, you may need to just go ahead and flip it around. Now we're going to connect one of the 30 centimeter, 12 inch cables to the pins. Take your time here, guys. It's really important that you do this correctly. You don't want to damage anything. I think the easiest way to go about this is to line up the white pin to the data pin. So white is data. Okay. Just remember that white equals data. So we're going to plug it in and then we're going to be ready to install it in the dome. We're getting excited, aren't we? All right. So the cap side is going to install onto the LED mount. The cap needs to be on the left. And you're going to go ahead and line it up and just push one side down and then push the other one. You should hear a click. Go ahead and check it from the front and everything should be lined up. You should be able to see all of the beautiful LEDs. If you need to remove this, always be gentle and careful. The easiest way to do this is to gently squeeze the side of the silver piece and then pull up on one of the tabs and that should release it. Next up is attaching the front logic display clips and cables. You're going to want to grab the clip guide piece and you'll take the FLD that has one set of pins, place it inside. You'll also want to take the second FLD that has two sets of pins and place it in the lower part of this piece. Again, make sure you always hold on to this. They will fall out if you're not holding it. Go ahead and flip it over. Make sure you hold on tight. Grab the 30 centimeter, 12 inch cable. We're gonna go ahead and line up white to data and connect us to the in set of pins. Then we're gonna grab the shorter cable, the four inch, 10 centimeter, and connect that from the out pins on the lower FLD to the top and again, we want to make sure that white goes to data. Since you have it out, go ahead and check your connections on all this and just verify that everything is correct. And then I want you to go ahead and get used to practicing a grip that you'll need for installing this. Your thumb's going to go on one side, your middle finger is going to go on the other, and your index finger is going to go on top. And you're going to use this grip when you go ahead and install it. Okay, so we got our firm grip on it. Now we're going to go ahead and line up the top clip first. Try to put in a little groove. Gently set it down and then go ahead and click it into place from the back. And you're done. Go ahead and check the front. You can see all the pixels. Well done. If you need to take this off, always be very, very, very gentle. Make sure you're holding the pieces so they don't come out. Just go ahead and apply a little bit of pressure to that tab on the bottom. Go ahead and grip it from the side and you should be able to pull it right off. All right, it's time to connect the two logic displays to the microcontroller. There are two sets of pins on top of this for labeled RLD and FLD. And you'll also note that our data is gone. Now it's an S. So we're going to keep our system and keep white to signal. 
white to S. So we'll take the RLD and plug it into the very first set of pins on top labeled RLD. Then we're going to take the cable from the FLD and connect that to the second set of pins right below it labeled FLD. And then take a little bit of time just to check your work and make sure that everything's connected correctly, everything's in the right slot, and that everything is good to go. And so our last step is to insert the controller into the box that's already installed in your R2. And you'll notice there's an arrow in the box and the green 5 volt connector should be at the top of the box and the USB-C connector should be at the bottom. Go ahead and check that. The pull tab on the lid should also be pointed up and it'll just go ahead and click in place. So let's go over to R2 and we're going to go ahead and put the controller in the box. We got USB-C on the bottom. Everything looks good. Your cables for the FLD and RLD should be off to the side. You've got your 5 volt connector in place. Go ahead and put the lid on. There's a cutout on the side for all your cables. You just want to make sure that they're routed through it. So grab your power bank and USB-C cable. Go ahead and plug your USB-C cable always gently into the bottom of the microcontroller. Plug in your USB-C, wait a second or two, and then check out your Astro Pixels. If they're not working, go ahead and check your wiring and that may resolve the issue. So always refer to the Astro Pixels website for power information. This is not a recommendation. This is what I'm doing. It's a power bank with AC and USB-C. I'm using it with a short USB-C extension. I'm also using a longer three foot um, USB-C cable. And what I'm doing also is plugging in the control box into the AC. All this goes inside. I run the USB-C up to the microcontroller and then I run this shorter extension through the bottom and then I go ahead and connect that to the wall when I need to charge it. So many ways to do it. You have to pick the one that works best for you. Also working on a couple other things. I'm working on some frames for the front and rear logic displays. This should finish it off and look pretty nice. They're going to be very thin. And then also working on a part to get the hollow LEDs working. And that's going to be a no cut solution. There's actually a couple of great solutions out there right now, if you are wanting to install these. And then I'm thinking about the other two, the two circles, but I got to say, I like the way they look right now. And I like the interactivity that's synced up with the movements. So that's it for now. Make sure you connect the blue wire before you put the head back on, put his little radar eye back on and uh, yeah, enjoy your new droid with Astro Pixels. If you have any questions or comments about this tutorial, you can go ahead and message me on Etsy. And thanks for watching and take care.